Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session on and comparing performance um, with Analyzer, specifically around MPS propositions. Um, I'm Natalie and this is Mark, uh, and we're going to sort of take you through the next half an hour or so um, in terms of how do you use Analyzer to compare performance of MPSs um, and some of our thinking around that as well. Um, so um, I think there are some new kind of faces and joiners on this call. So if you are new, welcome, welcome to the format. So you'll see down the side, there's a kind of chat bar, which you can use. And we'd really love you to kind of get involved with all of your questions, your comments, your sort of queries. Uh, we kind of find these sessions work well if people engage and stuff. Hang on. Sorry, I'm going to have to duck off just for a second. OK, Mark's going to go and do something. <laughs> and, I'm live to this. and I'm going to mute him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to keep doing some bit of preamble chat. So Mark's on mute just for now. And now it's back I'm on. back. I'm back. Thank I'm you. back. We've got the, bath <laughs> the bathroom is getting done upstairs. And uh, Bob, the builder, whose name literally is Bob, and he is a builder, um, uh, wanted something, but he's, he's gone away now. Nothing like a, li <laughs> nothing like a live broadcast. Hey? <laughs> anyway, where was I? MPS performance. Right. So last week we kind of talked about uh, comparing MPS more broadly. So this time we're going to focus purely on the performance aspect. Um, as I said, chat downside. There's also an ask a question button at the bottom, which you can use. Um, so, yeah, just get involved, get in amongst it as we go through. Um, what else do I want to say? I think that's pretty much it just now in terms of the intros and things. What I would kind of encourage you to do is to use that kind of chat just to kind of let us know how you do um, MPS performance comparisons just now. Um, is it a process you enjoy and relish or is it something that makes you kind of tear your hair out? Um, and it'd be good to know. It'd be good to hear the interesting kind of different perspectives on that. Um, and Mark, kind of from your side of things, um, how would you say the state of play is just now in terms of being able to kind of compare MPS performance and how kind of deep should firms go with this stuff, do you think? Okay, well, first of all, hello, everybody. Thanks for thanks for coming on and sorry about uh, that little, little, little moment there. Um, performance is always tough, right? And the reason is that there are layers of it, or at least there's layers of how to approach it. Um, and I'm very nervous about St. Firms, this is what you should do, because um, you've all got things that, that you like and don't like. But um, I think there are tools out there. <clears throat> so I would include um, FE's tool, ARC, these kind of guys, who when you know who you want to research, you can go in and do some really quite granular um, uh, performance attribution, um, and some in-depth historical stuff of asset allocations and all that kind of thing inside um, each MPS. And I know that for some firms who are, let's be honest, into that, um, that's really valuable. Uh, and you love doing that kind of stuff and never happier than pouring over a, uh, you know, a big spreadsheet of relative asset weightings over the last 48 months to see whether, you know, um, as I would say, Uzbekistan yak futures were a really big part of that portfolio or not. And more power to you. Um, and I think those tools are there. Um, and we haven't built one of those, right? That's not what we do. Um, so what is behind the way we've built Analyzer is to try and get you quickly to a short list of NPS providers, ranges, or portfolios that you want to re research in more detail if you're one of those people. Within that then, um, we've got a couple of different ways of approaching performance. So what we do is we lift it from the DFM themselves. Um, so this is information they publish, um, and I'll talk more about what's involved in that in a little while. Um, and that's fine, right? It's it's. Uh, I know people sometimes have a, a bit of a dim view of um, the stuff that providers publish themselves, um, but they're not allowed to lie. You know, I'm sure people get things wrong, but they're really not allowed to lie. And honestly, most of them, you know, well, I've never found one that was deliberately obfuscating or misleading anything because it doesn't last. Like it's, it, it busts open pretty fast. Um, so we use their data. That's different to what some of the other tools do where they get the actual asset weightings um, day by day from the portfolio managers themselves and they build the performance themselves. So 
that's full of potential little what's the word like you know when you start that thing about you start off swimming from the south coast of england and you've got to swim to france and you're like half a degree apart in the way you swim and by the time you get there it's quite far apart that's kind of what happens there um so it all has to do with what time of day people value things when you took the weighting when you did your calculations versus when the dfm uh, looked historically at theirs and that kind of thing. So they all work, right? They're all pretty close, but none of them, I would say, are completely, completely accurate. I think there's only one wholly accurate way to measure performance, and it's beyond us, right? We, we don't do it, and we can't do it, I don't think. Um, and I remember having a really long conversation with Dave Ferguson, um, ex-nucleus, now SECO, uh, about this, and it was that the only way you could properly, properly see the experience of a client was to get a client who was invested in that portfolio on that platform for the entire time series that you're looking at. So if you want to look for one year performance, you're looking for client Mark Paulson, who had 100 grand in his SIP and was in Tatton portfolio five or, or whatever it is all through that period. And you can take account for withdrawals and, and subscriptions and stuff, that's okay. Um, but you would need to see the actual experience of that client and that would then factor in fees and you could either discount or include platform fees and advisory fees, depending on what you want. You would see the OCFs in action accurately. So sort of on a, on a real basis as opposed to an ex ante basis because uh, we all know that things vary as they go along. And you would see the actual impact of the DFM fee as well, because the nature of platforms and the nature of MPSs is, is that if somebody says, listen, our fee is not 0.2% or, or whatever it is, that's kind of a rule of thumb of what it is. In the actual calculations of how it works out on a given portfolio over a given time series, it could be very slightly either side, and that's just to do with the calculations of when stuff's deducted. It's not that anybody's lying, nobody's being naughty. This is all just maths. Um, and so I, I, I really struggle with performance on, on MPS, to be honest. I want to give users something really accurate, but I know that the only truly accurate um, uh, figure for any portfolio on any platform will require that level of, um, of data, I guess. And the number is going to be different for every platform as well. And it's going to be different um, depending on whether somebody popped in and out of a portfolio, all that kind of when stuff. When you trade, all of that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of variables. Um, so our approach then is to say that we're going to use the fact sheet data um, because it's published through a compliance process and all that kind of stuff. It's publicly available. You can audit it. You can go back in time and see old fact sheets. You can do all that kind of stuff. And that's fine for what we're doing because the purpose of MPS Analyzer and Platform Analyzer as well, by the way, is, isn't is to be the tool that you use to really, really, really dive deep in, in investment performance. It is a tool that you can use to work out what MPSs are likely to be suitable, get a short list together, and then go and have, as I said earlier, have as much fun as you like um, digging into it. Um, it will be a useful usable rule of thumb. It'll get you far enough. And what you're looking for, I think, uh, having been through this with a number of firms, is outliers. You know, I've, I've got a, I've got four that I was interested in. One of them is way, way outperforming the other ones. What's going on there? Is there a, a problem in the data? Or have they just shot the lights out? And if so, why? And I want to go and find out about that. Or, oh my goodness, they're all kind of grouped together that one sucks let's find out for the same kind of stuff one portfolio manager said to me that you can't control returns you can only control volatility mm -hmm. and because we volatility banned portfolios in the main um we would expect to see a lot of grouping and that is actually true that tends to be what happens so that idea that you can look in a kind of stochastic scatter of similar portfolios try and work out what's going where, look at how the risk budget gets you or doesn't get you more performance over whatever time series you want. Um, that's all really useful stuff. 
Um, so yeah, it's a very world's longest answer, right? Sorry about that, but um, it's a complex. <laughs> it's good for context. Yeah, no, yeah. it's good for context. Thank you, and, and good to kind of set out what we expect analyzer to be used for, and what we kind of don't. Um, so that's great. So should we see it in action? All right, let's do it. Um, I'm going to share my screen, um, and I hope everybody can see it. Um, so. I, I now can't see you, so I'm hoping that uh, you can all see it. Can you see it, Nat? Yeah, so what we can see now is the dashboard that you get when you go into Analyzer. Great. Um, so this is your dashboard you get when you log in. Um, I know you were saying we've got some new people, so I'll just, I'll just very, very briefly um, talk about who's on Analyzer. So if when you subscribe, you get platforms and MPS providers. Platforms, here they all are. Um, you'll notice already Premium just uh, completed its transaction with Morningstar yesterday, and that's been updated to it's the Morningstar Wealth platform um, instead of um, Premium now. So these are the platforms that you can look at. So there's how many? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there's 26 of them, I think. MPS providers, so change to MPS in our directory. Um, what have we got at the moment? I think that's 14. 14, I think we're just um, now, yeah. Yeah, and we have another, funnily enough, another 14 that we are in the process of adding. They won't all come at once because they all go at different speeds. Um, but within weeks, not very many weeks, um, we should be up to 28 um, providers. Um, we've been absolutely delighted and very, very grateful for all the firms that have got in touch uh, to say, please, could you add this one or that one? Um, and when you do that, we tend to say things like, please, could you go and speak to them and tell them that you want them on this tool? And that's been happening a lot. And um, we've had loads of um, uh, portfolio managers getting in touch to say, all right, then, how do we do this? Um, important to say, no provider gets charged to be on Analyzer. Um, so it's not very hard to get them to agree to be on it. They're just going to give us data. Um, and that's a, a kind of important thing. So there's no room for any provider to try and influence us to give them more prominence or to rank them in a different way or any of that kind of stuff. Um, and we deliberately decided that um, we didn't want to charge people for listings. We also don't offer things like sponsored content or premium listings or star ratings or whatever all of which are about making money um our job is to try and make money by convincing firms to subscribe to this and if we're unsuccessful in that then um i've spent a lot of money developing this system for nothing um so subscribe please um so that's the that's the providers we've got so i'm going to go to comparisons here um, and you see platform and MPS. We'll just go to MPS um, for obvious reasons. And here you can see the comparisons that you've run in the past. And there are three different kinds. Uh, you can run feature comparisons, and we did a session on that last week. You can run performance comparisons, which we're about to do, and you can run portfolio comparisons. And what that does is it gives you a big dump of data about um, uh, core attributes, so things like risk ratings um, and all that kind of stuff um, for the portfolios that you choose. Um, so we'll do performance today. I set up um, a, a kind of test one earlier for ESG ranges, um, and I can just click into that um, because it's saved. When I'm finished with it, I can delete it, or if I want to copy it and just change one thing in it, rather than starting again, I can just hit copy. Uh, and go through it. Um, but I will start a, a fresh one uh, and show you how it works. Um, so let's call it a uh, live test without Bob the Builder. <laughs> um, so we'll begin that one. And here we've got all the ranges um, that you can compare portfolio performance on. So here are all our providers. As you can see, most providers have more than one range. So although we may only be up to um, uh, 28 providers over the next few weeks, the total number of ranges will be well over 100, I think, by that point. And then if you get the portfolios inside that, each range has usually got seven to 10 portfolios in it, some are, some are lower. Um, you know, we're already up at hundreds and hundreds of portfolios um, that we're getting in here. There are 
um, we're led to believe about 80 um, kind of providers um, of these services that uh, are sort of open for people to do business with um, and listed on platforms and stuff. So we'll knock them down over time. So I, I'll, I'll do the, the ESG one again, mainly because um, Natalie did a fabulous um, webinar yesterday on ESG. Um, and uh, so it, it feels timely. Um, so what do we want? AJ Bell will go for the responsible NPS. You just tick the ones you like. Um, Betafolio ESG, um, Bruins Sustainable, uh, Brooks is Responsible. It's quite fun seeing all the marketing words. Um, <laughs> Copias is ESG, does what it says in the tin. EBI, I think all EBI's portfolios are, are ESG based. Sustainable for LGT, um, Responsible and Passive. One of the things I always like to do if I'm like doing kind of marketing coaching or training for anybody is if I say if you use a word and the opposite of that word would be ridiculous then it's probably not a good word to use so I'm imagining now the rest of the the um, <laughs> portfolios are irresponsible or unsustainable um, but I, I guess they probably wouldn't mind me saying that um, <clears throat> this is why I'm generally not allowed to do demos and things very often um, Schroeder's in there 7am I've got responsible choice uh, Sparrows are, um, we'll do the index funds only one, and Tatton ethical, as opposed to the unethical one, um, and I'll just include Waverton there. Okay, so then we go to next, and oh, look at that. Um, it's my favorite bit, which is our interactive little graph, and this is our um, interactive charting tool. <clears throat> so, takes a bit of unpacking because I've picked a lot of portfolios. Um, and that's deliberate because I'm now going to start knocking some out. But the you can see, hopefully, as I move my mouse around and hover over uh, a portfolio, um, there we are. That's Copia's ESG Cautious, and that gives me performance and volatility. Uh, here's Saracen on its responsible one, on its Cautious. Up here, Sparrows. Down here, Copia again, over here, Betafolio, and Schroeder's over there, and so on and so on and so on. Um, so as we go down, you'll be able to see some have figures in there and some are blank. Uh, if they're blank, it simply means that the provider hasn't yet given us um, data, uh, and we're in the process of beating them up to try and get it, so they won't be included uh, in the graph. Um, that's is only happening because it's early doors for Analyzer and we we fill in those blanks as time goes by. So for Bruin, uh, we don't have theirs. AJ Bell, we don't have theirs. So let's just get rid of that one at the moment and Bruin there. Um, they're not doing anything for us. But we know we've got Betafolio in here. So I'm hovering over Betafolio in the list. And as I click it, watch what the graph does. So their portfolios disappear. Uh, and I can go through and do lots and lots and lots of those and as i do that the graph rescales uh dynamically um and lgt haven't given us anything either so they need to go away uh, but we know we've got beta folio so there we go i know i've got saracen um so there they are uh, i know i've got tatin and i know i've got sparrows so here we are so what do we see well there's a few things to unpack here uh, first things first is um, you get to see, I'll, I'll actually just have one, I'll just um, do Sparrows here, um, who also got beta folio. Okay, there. So what we're looking for is to see whether the additional volatility that you've um, let your client in for is delivering better returns. And in this case, it's an extremely linear experience. Um, that's great. That's not always the case. I think if I look at that Saracen portfolio and get rid of Sparrows, we can see um, that our additional budget right up here at the top end um, of Saracen uh, didn't really do very much for us, um, but adding a little bit of volatility between um, the balanced and the growth really did uh, jump you up a little bit there. Um, so that's a good thing to notice. Um, obviously, you see the performance here. At the top, we've got different time series. Um, so I'm going to I'll leave them out. Uh, I haven't got Bruin. I do have Copia. I've got Brooks, got EBI. Um, I've got Schroeder's. Uh, I've got Sparrows. I've got Tatten. 
and I've got waiver set. Okay, um, so I've included a load of them back in there, and you can have fun uh, adding and, and deleting them. As I go up to three year, it changes, and I think some of them drop away. I can't quite see, um, but I'll go out to five years, and now we've got fewer. Um, so the um, the LGT portfolios, uh, they've got a three-year track record, but we can see they're missing there. They don't have a five-year track record. So there we are. Um, so sometimes as you check these time series, uh, younger portfolios, I suppose, is the only thing I can think to call them, um, they'll fall away. Um, one of the things people have asked is, okay, that's great, but um, I don't just want it over one, three, five, seven, and 10 years where that is appropriate. I want it from time point X to time point Y exactly. And my answer is that's what you want those other tools for. Because what they're doing is building the portfolios themselves. They're not taking data from platform or whatever else. They're getting holdings day by day uh, from those portfolio managers, and they're really diving into um, some in-depth analytics and building the portfolios themselves so that they can give you daily performance, so that you can build bespoke time series. That's beyond what Analyzer is there to do, or at least at the moment it is. Um, we're here, go back to three year, we're here so that you can have a look at the ranges, think, well, that's interesting. I want to know more about that. I really like the look at that one. I'm not so keen on the look at that one. That one looks to be an outlier, I wonder if I've missed something along the way, and so on and so on and so on. So in the same way that price is interesting for platforms, but it's something that you look at once you've identified whether a platform is suitable for your clients or not. So you can have um, portfolio, excuse me, you can have a platform that is suitable for your client that is expensive and one that is low cost. All right. And they're both suitable. It's just one's more expensive than the other. Suitability exists independently of price, in our view, anyway. Um, you can have portfolios that are suitable for your client. And we take you through a suitability journey here um, that perform really well um, or have done in the past and some that have performed less well in the past. And we all know about past performance. So that's kind of it really, all the data is down the side. You can download um, into uh, uh, an image of the chart that you can then clip and put into a report should you wish. But if you do a full due diligence journey, which we're not doing today, but we will do on another demo, um, then you um, will have this as part of the journey for due diligence. But what we do is we put it towards the end of the journey because we're all, all about saying, what are your requirements? What is it that the, the portfolio needs to do? What kind of, if it's thematic or if it needs to be available in certain places or whatever else, how do we get a short list that you can work with? Here's your quick performance check and you can play about with that. Um, if you're happy with all of that, then you take XYZ providers through and you leave ABC providers behind. Um, and that gives you your short list, which you can either just accept as is and pick one, or if you want to go and do, as I say, um, in-depth analytics, or you want to go and meet those companies or whatever it is, that's a good way to do that. And the, the great thing about this is that if you are used to using some of those tools that um, the fund research guys produce, they're awesome, right? They, they, they're properly in-depth, um, but you can't just go and research 20 companies on them. Um, you've got to work out which ones it is you want to do. Otherwise, it's a bit of a fan call. Um, and um, this should help with that. Uh, and that's kind of it. It's as simple as that. It's it's not a very complex thing at all. Um, the date, I didn't mention the dates up here to the end of the last reported quarter. So um, June 22. Um, so we're just getting the new uh, stuff in. There is one thing. I'm sorry. There was one thing on that. I bet you're about to pick me up on it. Uh, that I need to mention. Um, of our 14 providers that are live, and in fact, including the 14 that are to come, we have three providers. Um, I might stop sharing now. Um, let's do that, uh, and hopefully you can see me now. There, we've got three providers who report gross fees. Everybody else does net. Um, and those three are Betafolio, 
um, they are Brooksmac and LGT. Um, so three, you know, uh, really reputable providers. They don't want to give us net figures. We understand their hesitation in doing that. We really, really, really uh, want them to start giving us net. So we're trying to influence them to do that. Um, and our experience, Terry, who is the, the guy in charge of Analyzer, and I see is there um, in the chat, um, the uh, uh, kind of flow of when providers are kind of getting selected or deselected, it seems to be the case that advisors that are going through this journey with us tend to be ignoring ones that only report gross of fees. Um, and um, so we're, we're hoping that will help people change their mind. Terry makes a very important point there. When we say gross of fees, we mean the DFM fee itself. All the uh, portfolios are net of fund fees of the um, the asset fees, the OCS, and, and so on of the um, uh, of the portfolios. And I, I kind of get it. Um, sometimes DFMs charge different amounts on different platforms or to different advisors, and so well they might say, "Well, gross is actually better," but the market does net for the most part. Um, and so we're going to try and get people to do net as well. But you need to know there are three. When you include those in a comparison, we star them so that you can see which ones are there and they will probably look slightly better. Um, so you need to hold that in your mind. But as long as you do that, because you're not creating that incredibly detailed, super, super accurate portfolio performance comparison here, you're going to go and do that somewhere else, um, either getting more stuff from the the provider themselves or or working with the platform or or whatever it may be um it's good enough for government work um as long as you bear as long as you hold it in your mind you shouldn't select a portfolio just on the basis of a performance comparison on analyzer you should go through the due diligence journey uh to check the suitability and that's how you get the record uh, of what's right and this is just one part of it Okay, perfect. Thank you for that. Um, so I think that's kind of answered um, Christopher's question that he had around how do you make sure that providers are kind of doing it on the same basis, excluding and excluding charges. Um, but if you've got any more follow up questions on that, um, Christopher, just let us know. Um, and equally, if you're at home watching and you do have some questions or comments, um, just let us know. Um, but if you don't have any more questions, that's pretty much it. So it's kind of um speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> um, Mark, was there anything else you wanted to add? Uh, no, no, no. I think that's um, I think that's all of it for this one. I mean, Analyzer does a ton of stuff. Um, and uh, I, you know, I'm so enthusiastic about it that I would love to show you it all. But I suspect you've all got other things to be doing on a, uh, on a sunny Friday or whatever kind of Friday it is, wherever you are. I will tell people that haven't looked already the cost of subscribing to Analyzer, because I'm afraid it's not free because um, it takes quite a lot of looking after and quite a lot of building. Um, and the answer to how much does it cost is £300 a year plus tax. Uh, you can pay that monthly or annually, it doesn't really matter. Um, and that gets you the platform and the MPS bit. It also gets you a free annual copy of our guide to platforms, uh, which we used to sell for 200 quid by itself. Um, so that's all just chucked in. And we do a quarterly pack, which has always been very platform focused. But as we've added MPS now, um, we'll gradually introduce more and more MPS content into a quarterly kind of market pack as well. Um, and then we do lots and lots of other uh, nice things and give enrichment, I suppose, uh, uh, you might call it, um, for people who have been nice enough to subscribe. If you're a free user of Analyzer, you won't see the MPS data. It's not there. Um, it's only for paying customers, I'm afraid. You can see what would be there, um, but you can't you can't use any of the stuff um, because uh, I'm afraid that it's, it's just one of those things. It's a commercial world out there. So 300 it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, and we hope that very much that you might give it a little bit of house room. Perfect. Thank you, Mark. Um, so, yes. Yeah, so as Mark says, then, so um, I'm going to do some messaging now. So just bear with me on this. But <laughs> So if you are a kind of um, a free user and you do like the look of MPS Analyzer and want to give it a whirl, you can upgrade to do that. Um, you can also sort of sign up and get a free trial. Um, 
you if you are a paying user a premium user for us just now this is all available to you you can go in you can have a play it'd be really good for you to let us know what you think what you'd like to change what you really like we love all of that feedback and the team are really good at responding to that um, and if you're seeing all of this for the first time and you haven't yet signed up to analyze it you should really do that so you can do all of these options and more there's a big green button at the bottom um, Thank you, Mark. <laughs> uh, NPS Analyzer, find out more, and that will take give you a bit more information and also kind of um, let you log in, sign up, take a trial, do whatever you want to do. Um, so our next and final event in this kind of mini series of demos is this time next Friday. So it's at 11 o'clock. And as Mark says, it's all to do with uh, building an NPS shortlist. So we're really getting into the sort of meat of the process there. Um, so we'd love to see you for that. You can also sign up via that button. It's really a magic button. You can do everything on that button. <laughs> so thanks very much for that. Um, in the meantime, all that's left to say is thanks very much to Mark. Um, thank you, Mark. Um, thanks to Bob the Builder. <laughs> um, and thanks to you at home uh, for watching as well. And we hope to see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.